Hello and welcome to Middle School Group at Eugene Faith Center. My name is Mark. I'm glad we can connect today. I hope you've all had a great week. I've been able to get out of my house with my kids and that has been fantastic. Another thing that's fantastic is whatever Gabby's got for us. Let's go check it out. Hey Kurt, what game do you want to play this week? I don't know. I thought you were going to do the game. What game do you want to do? Mm, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Mm, I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Come to think of it, I got some ideas. Hi, y'all. Welcome to this week's game. It's all about learning lessons. Some people call it quick tricks or DIY. I just call it common sense. When spilling something in the fridge, oops, warm up a sponge, then wipe it down. When your sibling says, hey toot head, wanna make me some cookies? Always mix the dry ingredients before you put in the wet. Is your sponge disgusting and smells weird and it's all stiff and crunchy? Two things. Put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and heat that bacteria right up till it dies. Second, put it in the sink with some baking soda or some vinegar for heaven's sake. That's gross. When your parental figure says, hey, it's time to do the laundry. One, don't put your red shirt in with your whites. Two, doing the laundry means putting it in the washer waiting for it to be done in the washer, putting it in the dryer, taking it out of the dryer, folding it, and putting it away. When you're making the bed and you think, gosh, it's a corner and I have all this loose fabric. What do I do, just shove it in there? No, that's not the way the Lord teaches us. Here's how you do it. You bring it out, tuck in with your hand, fold down, get that nice crease, wow. Fold in this side, then, in this side, and you have a beautiful maid's tuck. Ho <laughs> ho Gabby, I can't wait till we can share a six foot away air high five. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. When I was young, I used to think that racism was a distant problem. It was a problem before the Civil War, it was a problem in the southern states in the 70s and with the LAPD. That's what I thought. I can clearly remember a black man named Rodney King being beaten up, outnumbered, by Los Angeles police officers as they beat him. I can see the tears in my parents' eyes as we watched, but I thought it was a problem far away from me. And then I grew up. When one of my African-American friends shared with me about the racist names that one of his coworkers would call him on a daily basis, I was shocked. When I heard that his supervisors didn't do anything about it, I was horrified. Because I was white, I had this like immunity, like a privilege that I had been completely unaware of, the racism in Lane County. This racism that was inflicting pain in my dear friend's life. So you know what I did? I cried and I repented. Repentance, it means a decision to change, to change the way I decided to change the way that I thought about life, specifically racism in the US of A. Instead of thinking that it was distant, I realized it was right here in my own backyard. Romans 12:1 says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, to give your bodies to God because of all that he's done for you. Let your bodies be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he'll find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you'll learn to know what God's will is for you, which is good pleasing and perfect. I want you to notice two things. First, God wants our bodies. Second, God wants our minds. 
nowadays in America, it's easy for us to think poorly about our bodies, to think, oh, I'm too this, too that. There's so many movies and pictures showing us what we should look like, but God wants our bodies. Why does God want all of our bodies, even the tall, skinny bodies? He wants my body, your body, our bodies to be a living sacrifice. Yes, my master, right? <laughs> no, we're not brainless, unthinking zombies. God wants us to surrender our bodies to him, and then we'll know what he wants us to do with our surrendered bodies as our minds are transformed. We shouldn't say, you know, someday God will change me. And we also shouldn't say, oh, if I could just try harder. We're surrendering to God and working with Him in a process of lifelong transformation. God wants our bodies surrendered to Him. And God wants our minds transformed, changed. Why does God want transformed minds and surrenders bod surrendered bodies. A verse I keep thinking about this week is that God is near to the broken, to the broken hearted. That's in Psalm 34. I love that verse and I have experienced God's presence when I've been broken hearted. But I've been thinking this week, what if God had a body? What if God What if God had ears and he could literally be next to the brokenhearted, listening to them, hearing their shouts of grief? What if God had feet so he could march with the brokenhearted? What if God had hands? to write a letter to stand with and for the brokenhearted? What if God had eyes so he could weep with those who weep? What if God had a lot of bodies that worked together almost like one big body? What if it were called the body of Christ? And it was committed to transformation of the mind, changing our minds, a disassembly of what we think is true and a rearranging into what's really true. What if that whole body of Christ was committed to that? And what if they continually, every day they woke up, first thing in the morning, offered their bodies to God as living surrendered bodies to do acts of love, to fight against the evils of racism, by overcoming it through patience, goodness, and love. This week, what would happen in our city if we gave God our bodies? What if we gave God our minds to change our minds? Here's an exercise I did several years ago, and if you want to do it, you could open your hands, close your eyes. I know some of you watch this with your parents and your siblings, but maybe you could just try this, okay? Now just think about saying this phrase that I'm gonna say. Don't say it out loud, but pretend you are about to say this phrase in front of your friends or family and think about the thoughts that you would have. Black lives matter. What's going on in your mind? What's going on in the mind that God so desperately wants to transform? Years ago when I first thought about saying this phrase, Black Lives Matter, I realized that the things that were keeping me from saying it were fear, wanting to protect myself from difficult conversations, and all kinds of what ifs. But ultimately I realized that none of those reasons that were holding me back were loving or godly reasons. What's in our minds that would keep us from saying that black humans matter? Let's repent. With God's help, let's change our minds, and then our bodies will know what to do next. The mind is where the thoughts and attitudes are transformed, but the bodies is where the action takes place. What we do is what shows whether or not our mind is actually being transformed. What we do shows the transformation. Maybe like me, 
you feel late to take a stand. But I would simply remind you of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, the time is always right to do what is right. Would you pray a courageous prayer with me? Hello, Jesus. I surrender my body. I surrender my mind to be transformed by you. Help me, Lord, to take a stand against racism in our country. Thank you that you accept me and love me no matter what, but you love me too much to stay the same. Amen. Well, I love you. I know you all still love me. Go love somebody. <laughs>